بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا توسر وتم بالخير الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتد يا لولا أن هدانا الله Praise to Allah who has guided us to this and we would never have been guided if Allah had not guided us. Let's begin book number two with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this lesson, we will learn about particle of emphasis, which is inna, another particle of emphasis, which is la'illah, interrogative particle, which is used to ask a question, um. Then we will learn about a special noun, which is dhu and the feminine is dhatu. That means having or possessing. And then the number 100, which is miyatun, and 1000, which is alfun. Particle of emphasis and accusative case. Inna harfu tawkidin wa nasbin. Inna has many meanings. For example, indeed, verily, truly, and surely. It is only used in a nominal sentence. We can only use it with al jumlatul ismiya, And it is a very important particle of emphasis. It makes the subject, which is muqtadaun. We know that uh, a nominal sentence consists of uh, subject, which is muqtadaun and predicate, which is khabarun. So it makes the subject of the sentence accusative, it makes it mansub, it gives it nasb. And uh, the analysis of the nominal sentence changes as follows when it contains inna. When we talk about a regular nominal sentence, al jumlatul ismiyatu, we say al kitabu jadidun. The book is new. Al kitabu is mubtadaun and jadidun is khabarun. And we have learned about this in detail in book number one. But when we say in al kitaba jadidun, now we will see that at least two changes will take place. Number one, uh, the subject will become mansub. And number two, it will not be subject anymore. Now it will be called as ismu inna. Inna harfu tawkidin wa nasbin. It is a particle of emphasis and accusative case. Al kitaba becomes ismu inna and jadidun becomes khabaru inna. Now basically inna has owned the whole sentence. So instead of saying al kitab is subject and jadid is khabar, now we will say that al kitab is ismu inna and jadidun is khabaru inna. The easiest way to know that the immediate noun that is a singular noun, please remember, immediate noun that is singular noun or mufrad after inna will be always mansub and it will be called ismu inna and khabar will be called khabaru inna. Inna can be used with uh, attached pronouns as well. Uh, we have learned the attached pronouns and the detached pronouns in book number one in detail. Uh, for example, when we talk about the detached pronoun, so there is a small typo here, detached pronouns, we have huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna, ana wa nahnu. And when we talk about the attached pronoun, we have learned that it is hu huma hum, ha huma hunna, ka kuma kum, ki kuma kunna, ya and na. Now, these attached pronouns, as we can see over here, they can be used with inna. All of them can be used with inna. So who becomes inna who? Huma becomes inna huma. Hum becomes inna hum. And the rest of the conjugation will continue up to the last two pronouns where we have ya and we have na. Now here, there are two possibilities. It can be inni and it can be innani. And similarly, it can be inna, and it can be innana, and both of them have been used in the Quran in both ways, as inni and innani, and similarly, inna and innana. Now, 
the same thing that we have learned about ismu inna and khabaru inna. So whenever we use attached pronoun with inna, as we can see here, inna hu tabibun. Now the attached pronouns, they will be always used as ismu inna and tabibun will remain as khabaru inna. So inna will be harfu tawkid wa nasbin and the attached pronoun, which is who, it can be who huma hum, ha huma hunna, ka kumakum, ki kumakunna, ya and na. So whenever the attached pronoun comes with inna, it will always be ismu inna and uh, the noun that follows it will be khabaru inna. Inna has got some sisters, so they are called akhawatu inna. The reason why inna, we know that inna is a particle, it's kalima, and kalima in Arabic is feminine. That's why we say akhawatu inna, the sisters of inna, because inna is feminine, right? It's a particle, and we know all the particles uh, or the kalimas in Arabic, they are feminine. Uh, it has got uh, like five sisters, as we can see here. Uh, we have four over here, and the fifth one is inna itself. Uh, so we have uh, La'alla, that has two meanings, I hope or I fear. In today's lesson, we will focus on Inna and La'alla. And the rest of the four sisters of Inna, which is Laita, Ka'anna, Lakinna, and Anna, uh, we will learn when we proceed in this book in the following lessons. In this lesson, our focus is on Inna and La'alla. La'alla, as we have seen, it has two meanings. It gives the meaning of at uh, that means uh, hope, and ishfaq, that means fear. And it has the same function as inna, and we know the function that after la'alla, and the noun that is subject becomes ismu la'alla, and predicate that is khabar becomes khabaru la'alla. So when we say la'alla al-imtihana, so of course after la'alla, the noun has to be mansub. Because it is from the sisters of Inna. And Sahalun will be Khabaru La'alla. So we will we will say La'alla Limtihana Sahalun. Uh, I hope the exam is easy. So it can it depends on the context. Uh, from the context, we will know inshallah whether it is being used in the context of hope or fear. However, in the Quran, it is translated generally, it is tra translated as perhaps. There is no translation as I hope or fear in the Quran. Generally, it is translated as perhaps. Interrogative particle am, very important particle, and it has a specific construction. Am means or, and is used in an interrogative sentence. It is used in an interrogative sentence. A masjid hada am baytun. Is this a masjid or a house? Amin. Uh, so it should be min, yeah. Amin Almania anta, Amin Fransa. Are you from Germany or France? Now we can see that after Hamza, as we can see here, after Hamza, we have choice number one. And after Am, um, we have choice number two. This construction requires that nothing comes after, uh, not, nothing comes between Hamza and the first choice and between Am um, and the second choice. If you say anta tabibun amadarisun, it's strong. Why it's strong? Because whatever comes after Hamza must come after am. For example, here after Hamza, we have a pronoun, anta. And here after am, we have a noun, which is mudarisun. So we have two different things. We have a pronoun and we have a noun. And to have this construction right, we have to have a noun after Hamza, and similarly a noun after um. So we will say atabibun anta am Are you a doctor or a teacher? So that's a very important thing that we need to know that after Hamza to istifham, whatever comes after Hamza must come after um. And please remember that this is a combination which always comes together. Uh, uh, and um, they always come together. Whereas we have another particle which is called au. Uh, it is used in non interrogative sentences. So if a sentence is not a question, then we use au. We don't use am. So, Sametul Mudarisa, Awil Mudira. I heard the teacher or the principal. So now we can see here it's not a question. And that's why we have to use au. Take this or take that. 
So if you remember this example, خُذ هذا أو ذاك, um, that will be easier. So أو is used in a sentence which is non-interrogative and أم is used in a sentence that is interrogative. Then we have a very important noun which is called ذو. Uh, there are five nouns that are called الأسماء المكبرة, the five big nouns, great nouns. We have learned two of them already. We have learned أبو. We have learned Ahu and today we are learning Dhu. So Abu Ahu, we learned in book number one and Dhu and the rest inshallah we will learn in book number two. What is so special about these nouns? Uh, these nouns are always Abu Ahu and Dhu. So we focus on Dhu today is always used as Mudaf. So the word following it is Mudaf Ilay. Dhu is marfu. And uh, inshallah about the mansub and majroor we will learn later. So we, today we our focus is on only the marfu form. So it has uh, the madhakar form and the mu'annath form. Singular mufradun is dhu for masculine, it is dhu and the plural is the wu, dhu and the wu. And the mu'annath is thatu for the feminine and the watu is the plural of thatu. So here we have dhu, the wu, the tu, and the wa tu. Now look at the construction of the sentence when it comes with dhu. So we can see over here, Hamidun dhu lihiyatin. Hamid has the beard. Hamid is mubtadaun, subject. Dhu is khabarun wa huwa mudafun. As we have seen today that dhu is always used as mudaf. So here it is mubtadaun. Uh, Hamid is mubtadaun, dhu is khabarun, wa huwa mudafun, and lihiyatin, mudafun ilayhi, which is mudaf ilayhi. As we have seen today that after dhu, the noun is always used as mudaf ilayhi. However, if we have a sentence like this, ha ulai atibba'u dhu malin kathirin. Now we can see that ha ulai is subject, mubtadaun, atibba'u is khabarun, and dhu here, as we can see here, now it is being used as the sifa of atibba'u, as an adjective for atibba'u, and we also know that it is used as mudaf. So for malin, it is being used as mudaf, and for atibba'u, it is being used as na'at, as sifa. So ha'ulai atibba'u, the wu malin kathirin, ha'ulai mubtadaun, atibba'u khabarun, the wu natun wa huwa mudafun malin mudafun alayhi and natun is the as we can see it's the sifa of malin so these are doctors having abundant wealth and the same goes to the feminine aisha tu talibatun thatu ilmin for the feminine we have to use thatu aisha tu is mubtadaun talibatun khabarun thatu natun wa huwa mudaf ilmin is mudafun alayhi ulaika talibatu thawatu khuluqin so here talibatu is marfu and thawatu will be marfu uh, Talibatu is feminine, the Watu is feminine, Talibatu is plural, and the Watu is also plural. So here, Ulaika is Muptadaun, Talibatu Badalun, or we can say Khabarun, and uh, the Watu will be, it's basically Badalun, sorry, so the Watu will be Khabarun, Wahua Mudafun, and Khulukin is Mudafun, Ilayhi. Let's begin the lesson. Adarsu Al Awalu, lesson number one. Hashimun. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be on you. So, assalamu alaikum is subject. Assalamu is subject. Alaikum is predicate. Wa means and. Rahmatullahi is mudaf mudafile. Wa barakatuhu is also mudaf mudafile. Barakat is the plural of barakatun. Barakatun is singular and barakat is plural. And we can see also, uh, we can also see. Uh, that it is being used as mudaf mudaf ilay. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be on you. Uh, there is a question. Adu min harf al jar la. It's not harf jar. It is used as mudaf, and it is the part of five nouns. Al asma al makabara. Five special nouns. For example, akhu, and similarly abu and dhu, and two more. Inshallah, we will learn later. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, taught us in the Quran A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim Wa idha huyyitum bitahiyyatin fahiyyu 
بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا And when you are greeted with a greeting, greet in return with one better than it or at least return it in a like manner. So if someone says, Assalamu alaikum to you, as per the Quran and also as per the hadith, we must say, Wa alaikum as salam. Or we say, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Or we say, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that whenever someone greets you, you greet him with a greeting that is the same or better than that. So whenever someone says, Assalamu alaikum to you, we must say, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. And if someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, we say, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And if someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, we also say, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. So here, uh, may Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be on you. And the same uh, construction is over here. However, we know that alaykum wa means and, and this is wa al astinafia that is used to start a sentence. Now we know that alaykum is jar majroor and jar majroor cannot be subject. So alaykum will be predicate and assalamu will be the subject. So that's the only change over here. And also please remember that whenever uh, jar majroor comes before the subject, it comes for the purpose of emphasis. As today's lesson is about emphasis, it is very, very important to know now that whenever jar majroor, subject and predicate, uh, sorry, uh, prepositional sub uh, phrase, whenever prepositional phrase comes before the subject, it comes for the purpose of emphasis. So when you say wa alaikum as salam, it is more emphatic. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hashimun, kayfa haluka ya ustadhu? Now we can see over here that uh, as we have seen has ismu and the attached pronouns will always be used as uh, the, the, the ism of the noun that comes before it. So it can be inna or it can be la'alla. In this case we have la'alla so ka will be ismu la'alla and bikhairin will be khabaru la'alla. And uh, how are you O oh teacher? I hope you are fine. If you see an example from the Quran based on the same pattern, Now, the best way to learn Arabic language is to learn a new idea and try to learn on that idea one example from the Quran or the Sahih Hadith. So if you remember one example for one rule of the Arabic language, inshallah that will help you a lot to, to understand the Arabic in a better way. So now here we have the similar kind of uh, uh, Example, and we have the verse from the Quran. So now we can see here that here we have la'alla, and then which is harfu tawkid wa nasbin, and ka will be ismu la'alla, and bakhion will be khabaru la'alla. Perhaps you grieve yourself to death, O Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, over them. And as I mentioned earlier, that in the Quran, la'alla will not be translated as fear or hope. Rather, it will be translated as perhaps. Al Mudarisu, Alhamdulillah. Wa kaifa haluka anta ya Hashimu. Again, a very beautiful expression over here. We have kaifa haluka, and after that, we have anta. So here, anta is harfu tawkid. It is, sorry, not harfu tawkid. It is being used for the purpose of emphasis, a tawkid. As I mentioned, that this lesson is about emphasis, about tawkid. Now, when you say kaifa haluka, how are you? The meaning is obvious, the meaning is clear. But when you say kaifa haluka anta, now anta serves two pur purposes. Number one, it clears the ambiguity that you are talking to only Hashem, no one else. And similarly, we can see that uh, when we have kaifa haluka anta, it is also being used for the purpose of emphasis or at tawkid ya Hashimu o Hashim. So Hashim says, all praise is due to Allah and how are you, O uh, uh, Hashim. Uh, now, on the same pattern for tawkid, we have example from the Quran. Ya Adam uskun anta wa zawjuka al jannah. Now, uskun is fail al amr. And we know that fail al amr already has inbuilt doer inside it. And the inbuilt doer is anta. So we have anta already in it. And this anta here is being used for the purpose of 
emphasis. Min dunil Quran or min ghairil Quran, even if we say, Ya Adam uskun wa zawujukal jannah, the meaning is perfectly clear. O, I, o Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise. But when we have Ya Adam uskun anta wa zawujukal jannah, now here anta is used for further emphasis for the purpose of tawkeed. Now in English, it's not possible to translate it twice like you, you, but as you can see in Arabic, yani ya adam uskun, yani anta taskun, uh, wa anta is again over here being repeated, and then we have zawjuka al jannata. So this is what we call a tawkeed. So please remember this uh, expression and also remember this example from the Quran. أنا أحبك كثيرا يا هاشم I love you a lot or I like you a lot أحب يحب means to like and أحب I and أحبك I like you كثيرا a lot يا هاشم أو هاشم إنك طالب ذكي ومجتهد وذو خلق Now we can see that we have إنك so ك will be will be اسم إن and talibun will be khabaru inna and then dhakiyun wa mujtahidun wa dhu khuluqin we can see that these are the adjectives or the sifat that are being used for the student for talib and now we can see that after dhu the noun is majroor why it is majroor because it is being used as mudaf ilayhi so the same thing here uh, ka will be ismu inna and talibun will be khabaru inna and uh, indeed, you are an intelligent, hardworking, and well-mannered student. And well-mannered student. Okay. Example from the Quran. إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحٌ So, يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانُ إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحٌ فَمُلَاقِيهِ So now, if you see uh, from the Quran, we have here, Innaka, so as we can see that ka will be ismu inna and kadihun will be khabaru inna. So again, if you can remember one example of la'alla from the Quran and one example of uh, inna from the Quran, inshallah, that will be very helpful. Indeed, you are laboring toward your Lord with great exertion. Innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqi. Amin Pakistan anta. Am min al Hindi ya Hashimu. Okay, now this Hamza has a specific name. It is called Hamza tu Taswiya, Hamza of equality. And why it is called Hamza of equality? Because whatever comes after Hamza must come after Am. We have learned earlier Hamza tu Istifham in book number one, and we have seen that Hamza tu Istifham is used to ask a question. Now this Hamza is called Hamza tu. Taswiya, which is Hamza of equality. I mean, Pakistana, and we know that Pakistan is Mamnu min asarf. That's why it does not have Kasra. I mean, Al Hindi, and uh, Al Hind is basically it's the name of the country. It should be Mamnu min asarf. But we know that when Al is added to a noun, then it accepts Kasra. Now, Al here is not being used for the purpose of uh, emphasis or to make it definite. It is extra Al, it is called Al Azaida. Arabs use it sometimes with the names of the persons and also sometimes with the names of the countries. Oh Hashim, are you from Pakistan or India? And the example, as I said, uh, for example, you can uh, hear, uh, yeah, so here we have the use of a uh, and am, um, but how, how do we differentiate between the use of am um and au? Oh? As we have seen in previously that au is used with the sentence that is non-interrogative. So you can take one example from here. خُذْ هَذَا أَوْ ذَاكَ Take this or take that. And in the Quran we have this example. أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ It is the same whether you warn them or not, they will not believe. So now we can see over here. أَ is Hamza to istifham and أَنذَرْتَهُمْ is verb. And similarly, Tundirhum is also verb. Lam is harfi uh, nafi. Inshallah, we will learn about it in in the in the in the rest of the book or when we proceed into the book. So we don't need to bother about lam because lam is used for negation. So you might be thinking like after am um, we don't have the verb straight away. Here na, lam is not 
considered over here because it is used for the purpose of negation. So after Hamzat uh, Taswiyah, we have the verb and And similarly, after Am, we have Tundirhum. And Lam is used for negation. So if you remember one example of a uh, and am from the Quran, that will be inshallah sufficient. Hashimun inni min al Hind or min al Hindi. Indeed, I am from India. Where is ismu inna now? We know that ya al mutakallim, the attached pronoun will always be ismu inna, and min al Hindi will be khabaru inna. And indeed, surely I am from India. Al Madarisu was the Miluk al Ladi Kharajamaka and the colleague or the classmate who left with you, Al Ana now, Minal Fasli from the classroom. Ahuwa Aidan Minal Hindi, is he also from India? So, Al Ladi, we have learned in book number one that after Al Ladi, generally we have a verbal sentence or a nominal sentence. In this case, we have a verbal sentence, Kharaja, Maka Al Ana, Minal Fasli, who left with you from the class, is he also from India? Hashimun, Hashim, La, no, Innahu, Min Pakistan. Indeed, he is from Pakistan. So here again, the attached pronoun will be Ismu Inna and Min Pakistan will be Khabaru Inna. No, he is indeed from Pakistan. Al Madarisu, the teacher, Inna Sa'ataka Jamilatun Ya Hashimu. Indeed, your watch is beautiful, O oh Hashim. Amin al Yabani here. Okay, now, uh, if you remember, like, the, the, the Arabic language is also called as Lughatul Hadf. It's the language of omission. So sometimes uh, some part of the sentence uh, or sometimes subject, sometimes predicate will be omitted. So Aminil Yabana, Aminil Yabani here, Aminil and uh, Aminil Hindi, let's say, but that part is omitted over here. Aminil Yabani here, is it from Japan? Uh, so the teacher says, indeed, your watch is beautiful. Oh, Hashim, is it from Japan? Sa'ata, sa'a, as we know, is, is uh, feminine. And also it is mansub over here. Sa'ataka, your watch. And that is the subject. And Jamilatun is predicate. But when it is used with the inna, then it becomes sa'ata will be subject, ismu inna. And Jamilatun will be khabaru inna. Hashimun, no, la, no, innaha. Minal Hind or Minal Hindi, indeed it is from India. Al Mudarisu, a Ghaliatun here, Amrakhisatun. Now, after Hamza, Hamza to Taswiya, what do we have? We have Ghaliatun, which is adjective. And after Am, what do we have? Rakhisatun, which is also adjective. A Ghaliatun here, Amrakhisatun, is it cheap or expensive? Hashimun, Innaha Rakhisatun Jiddan. Indeed, it is very cheap. Innaha bimiyati rubiyat in faqat, it is only 100 rupees. Now, what do we need to remember about miya? Uh, that means 100. It is also used as mudaf. And the noun that follows it will be mudaf ilayh, but the noun will be singular. The numbers from 3 to 10, we know that they are also used from as mudaf mudaf ilayh, but from 3 to 10, the numbers we know that mudaf ilayh is plural. But after miya, mudaf ilayh will be. Singular, as we can see over here, innaha bimiyati rubiyatin faqat, it is only 100 rupees. And then we have al mudarisu kam akhan laka ya Hashimu, how many brothers do you have, O Hashim? Do you remember about the use of kam? After kam, the noun, as we know, is singular, it is mansub and it is indefinite. Generally, the noun is singular, mansub, and indefinite. Uh, the noun is singular, but in English, the translation will be plural. Kam akhan laka ya Hashimu? How many brothers do you have, O Hashim? Hashimun li thalathatu ikhwatin. Thalathatu ikhwatin, I have three brothers. Now you can see over here that uh, here, li is jar majroor, prepositional phrase. It has come in the place of the subject. It is, but it will always remain as predicate. But whenever it comes in the place of subject, as we say, khabar uh, muqaddam, it is always used for the purpose of emphasis. And generally, after jar majroor, the noun is nakira. It is generally singular, uh, or it is generally nakira. For example, in the Quran, we have fi qulubihim 
maradun fi qulubihim maradun fi qulubihim is jar majroor and maradun is singular noun and as we can see that it is nakira similarly in in suratul lahab we have fi jidiha hablum min masad fi jidiha is jar majroor and hablun as we can see is a uh, indefinite noun so after when jar majroor comes in the place of the subject then the subject generally is it's indefinite it is nakira I have three uh, brothers, and uh, if you see the example from the Quran, "Qala Rabbi anna yakunu li ghulamun." Now we can see that uh, it is confirmed that "li" is jar majrur, and after jar majrur, the noun is indefinite. "Li ghulamun." The same thing over here, "li thalatha tu ikhwatin," and here we have "li ghulamun." Uh, of course, like we will base our examples from the Quran, so we will say that. The example is based from the verse of the Quran, and we will not say that the verse of the Quran is based on the example. So he said, "My Lord, how will I have a boy?" So "Qala Rabbi Anna Yakunu Li Ghulamun." So whenever Jar Majroor comes before the subject, then generally the noun that comes after that will be indefinite. It it will be nakira. Al Madarisu Atulabun Hum. uh simple very simple sentence uh, are they students nominal sentence uh, whom will be subject and tulab will be predicate generally uh, we know that uh, definite noun is is subject and uh, indefinite noun is predicate hashimun la innahum tujarun no indeed they are merchants al mudarisu wa kam ukhtan laka and how many sisters do you have Hashimun li arba'u akhawatin. I have four sisters. Now we know that uh, the numbers, I hope you didn't forget, the numbers from three to ten, they are opposite in gender. So sisters, ukhtun uh, is basically feminine and the number that is being used is masculine because we know the numbers from three to ten are opposite in gender. Al-Mandaresu afil hindi hunna al-ana. Are they in India now? Hashimun la No, inna hunna huna bil Madina til Munawwara ti. Indeed, they are uh, there in Madina Munawwara. Here in Madina Munawwara, ma abi wa ummi with my father and my mother. Uh, they are over here uh, in Madina al Munawwara with my father and my mother. Al Mudarisu atalibatun hunna are the students. Hashimun la. No, inna hunna. Indeed, they are mudarrisatun uh, teachers. Bil mad bil madrasa tithanaviyati in the secondary school. No, they are students. Mudarrisat cannot be students, so that's why I was like I had a pause. No, they are teachers in the secondary school. Al insanu min siyan and al insanu min al khata. Uh, this definitely shows us about our weakness that we are imperfect and we are weak and only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect and he is strong so whenever we make mistakes we must always realize about our weaknesses that we are imperfect and we are weak so again we can see here that hunna will be ismu inna and mudarrisatun will be khabaru inna And bil madr bil madrasa the thanaviyati in the secondary school in the hadar so and end of the lesson. Subhanaka Allahu wa bihamdika. Shahadu Allah ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.